Every week, the Chesterfield Royal Hospital receives somewhere in the region of 100 urgent referrals for suspected cancer. And we diagnose an average of 30 new cancers every week. Many more if we include common skin cancers. Roughly a fifth of everything we do at this trust is related to the diagnosis, treatment and follow-up of cancer, including end-of-life care. This makes cancer a core service here. We estimate that there are currently around 2 million cancer survivors in the UK, a number that grows by 3% every year. And thanks to improvements in surgery, radiotherapy and chemotherapy, cancer survivorship is improving all the time. The end of the small bowel is brought out onto the surface of your tongue. We diagnose and treat a number of different cancers including colorectal, lung, upper gastrointestinal, gynaecological and haematological. Here is a brief guide to a few of our other sites. In urology, uh, we deal with five cancer sites. Uh, we have prostate, bladder, testicular, penile and kidney. A few years ago we developed a one-stop uh, suspected prostate cancer clinic. Um, it's booked directly by the GPs, it's an electronically booked service and it just allows the patients to get uh, an initial consultation and the biopsies on the same day and then they return five working days later for the results. So within uh, a seven day period a patient can have the results and then we can uh, decide what treatment uh, they require. Before we introduced this service we actually looked at our sort of current pathway and uh, it was taking up to three weeks for patients um, from their first visit to the diagnosis uh, and we just felt that three weeks was too long uh, for patients to wait. They're obviously um, anxious about results um, and this way we, we found the correct balance really from getting um, uh, a consultation um, through to uh, a diagnosis. It allows the patients to know um, exactly what the diagnosis is um, and then uh, it gives them the opportunity to listen to treatments that are offered to them and then they can make a, a, a decision. We have a, a wide range of treatments uh, that we have to offer gentlemen who are diagnosed uh, with prostate cancer. Um, if the cancer is very small and there are no signs of spread, then the patient can opt for uh, surveillance of the cancer or they can decide to have a treatment such as surgery or radiotherapy uh, straight away. For gentlemen whose uh, prostate cancer is uh, spread towards the edges of the prostate or perhaps outside of the prostate or other parts of the body, then we can actually start them on uh, hormone uh, therapy, which is an injection treatment, and this helps to control prostate cancers, and we can start that the same day uh, as, the, as the decision is made. Uh, we obviously have close links as well with Wiston Park for radiotherapy uh, and with other hospitals for patients uh, requiring surgery. Uh, Nikki Jones and myself uh, facilitate a prostate cancer support group. Um, we very much enjoy doing this. We've been running for 10 years now. And again, this is uh, one of the largest support groups in the whole of the country, uh, which has been nationally recognised. And Nikki and I are, are very proud to be part of that. Ladies are invited for screening every three years if they're in the age between 50 and 70. At the moment we're running a trial as well and ladies 47 to 50 and 70 to 73 are also included in the screening. We have three screening units, one in the town centre and two mobile units that travel around North Derbyshire. North Derbyshire is very different to the rest of the screening units in the fact that we travel to each site every year and do a third of the population each year, whereas other screening units only visit one area, do the whole of the population, then don't come back for three years. But we have found that because we're in the same place at the same time every year, then people have got used to where we are at what time of the year we will be. The ladies are invited by letter, but because we're on the doorstep, that hopefully improves their attendance and um, because we're bringing the service to them rather than the ladies travelling. We usually take four views for a mammogram and that's um, 
two views of each breast and the breast is compressed from top to bottom and then from side to side. The um, examination, some ladies do find it a little uncomfortable but the compression is required for two reasons. One, to reduce the thickness of the breast and so that reduces the amount of radiation that we need to actually take the image. And secondly, because the breast is close to the heart we need to prevent movement and so the compression reduces the amount of movement on the image so that the images are as clear as they can be. Here at the Royal we're very lucky because we ha have all digital equipment now. It's the gold standard, it's state-of-the-art equipment and you know we're very fortunate to be able to have digital in all our areas. Uh, ladies can have all forms of treatment here at Chesterfield. They can uh, have just the small area removed they can have mastectomy or they can have reconstruction which can be immediate or delayed reconstruction. Uh, the breast care nurses are also trained in prosthetic fitting and uh, ladies can have the prosthesis fitted here. I've worked in breast screening now since um, 1989 when it first started here and um, I'm enormously proud of where the journey we've come in that time and we're always working very hard to try and maintain the standards for our patients. The Chesterfield Royal Hospital's Cancer Service has been placed in the country's top 10 performers for the second year running, following the recent results of the Patient Satisfaction Survey. Following on from last year's tremendous results, this shows that far from resting on our laurels, we've continued the hard work to improve even further and ensure that we deliver the best possible care to our cancer patients. Over the last few years, we've added a lot of different regimens to our cancer treatment services to offer patients in our region more of a choice as to where to be treated to allow them to receive their care closer to home. We've also worked incredibly hard to maintain the privacy and dignity of our patients and make sure that they're kept fully informed about their treatments so that they're able to make those choices whilst armed with all the facts. The feedback we've had has been absolutely tremendous from patients and proves that we have a service the whole region can be proud of. Well, here in dermatology we would see three main types of skin cancer. The basal cell carcinoma is um, caused by chronic sun exposure, so it's always on a sun exposed site such as the ears, the hands, the head, the scalp um, and it's basically a non-healing area so it tends to be an ulcer that, that the patient presents to the GP with and a squamous cell carcinoma tends to be a rapid growing lump again on a sun exposed site they're quite often tender and a melanoma is a mole that's changing shape, colour or size. The patient would go to their GP with the concerns of a changing mole or a non-healing area or the rapid growing lump and ask their advice and then the GP would refer them into us either as a routine patient if it's not something that can spread or metastasize um, or if that's got if it does have a potential to do that they would refer them urgently into us and we'll see them within two weeks of referral. There's a number of types of treatments available for skin cancers. The best, the gold standard is um, surgery so we will aim to remove them under local anaesthetic. Other areas can be treated with minor operations um, and we can even treat them with a cream or a cold spray which essentially burns the area off so it heals normal healthy tissue again. Well the people that are more at risk are those who work outdoors, people have outdoor hobbies because they're all mainly caused by sunshine, um, ultraviolet light, um, so we would definitely advise them to use sun protection, a high factor sun cream, use, seek the shade where possible, use clothing to, to cover their skin and definitely don't use sunbeds. We've seen a definite increase in the amount of skin cancer patients coming into our department and a lot of younger people as well. I think that's mainly because people can afford to go on holidays abroad. Um, the use of sunbeds, which we definitely don't advise uh, using. Um, we see about 800 cases, new cases of skin cancer each year. And in the UK, there's about 
100,000 new cases diagnosed. Cancers referred into Chesterfield Royal Hospital would be mouth cancers, so cancers of the tongue, the lip, the jaw, the cheek. There would be throat cancers, cancers of the larynx of the voice box. And we do also see cancers of the thyroid gland there referred into us as well. Many of our patients are referred into us via our um, neck lump clinic where ENT consultant, Max Fax consultant and thyroid consultant will sit together and see patients referred in by red letter. Patients then on that day will get um, an ultrasound scan if they feel that this lump is of suspicious, of suspicious nature and will then have biopsies done and results can be um, returned very soon and very swiftly we can get a diagnosis of a cancer. Other patients are referred directly into the ENT team, the MaxFax team from either their dentist or their GP um, and again by urgent letter. When myself and Mary came into post we realised that there was a need for a, a support group for patients with all head and neck cancers. There was already an established support group for the laryngectomy patients but we realised that there was not only a need for the patients to have some support but some carers support as well. So yeah, we um, questioned a lot of our head and neck cancer patients and over time we then formed Heading Forward in July 2010. Um, it's become a very successful um, support group um, and supports the needs of patients and their relatives. Most people come in to see me uh, for a wide range of subjects, uh, but primarily around travel insurance, housing benefits insurance, signposting to any type of cancer um, that the patient has been diagnosed with, um, that goes for both patients and for families um, and anyone else that's interested in any kind of cancer types. Um, we also diagnose to all other signposting agencies such as Citizens Advice Bureau um, and then on to drugs and rehabilitation as well. It is, it is primarily a drop-in centre for people to come through the door when they are looking for information but uh, in some cases afraid to ask. My name is Dave Cotton. In April 2013, I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. I've been receiving treatment at the Chesterfield Royal Hospital, including chemotherapy sessions at the Cavendish Suite. And this is my story. Well, they explained to me that I didn't need to have radiotherapy at all. It was, it was simply going to be a chemotherapy treatment. When, when I first came in, I, I can't remember much about that first session at all. The pain was in my right hip, so I, I, w I was turned over on my left-hand side. Um, and I can remember that quite vividly. And I was here all day. I think I did have a, a slight reaction to the drugs when they first went in, and they had to stop them. Um, so for about 20 minutes, there was a delay in putting the drugs in and then they restarted this computer controlled machine and, but they set it at a lower rate so effectively I came in probably at about nine o'clock in the morning and finished about four o'clock or half past four in the afternoon but since then they, they've, my body has adjusted to the drugs and as it has done they've been able to increase the speed so I'm not in um, for as long as I, I was that first time after the first chemo, a bad reaction to one of the drugs that I'd been given and I came out in a rash which was all over me effectively. It started behind a knee and then it just spread like wildfire and it was very hot and it was very itchy and it took them a few days to realise what the reaction was to so they stopped that drug uh, and then I started taking um, an aqueous cream which eventually kind of did relieve it. But other than that, the, the chemo treatment itself has been pretty straightforward. Occasionally some of the nurses have, have, have struggled to get a cannula in, but I know that that's fairly common and I know that I've had 
fewer problems. So the treatment has just been here, being sat up, hooked to these machines for several hours and then chatting normally to other patients in, in a similar situation. Um, and I've seen a few people come and go and kept in touch with them at, through clinics. Um, and it's gone pretty well. I'll be tired tomorrow, but typical pattern is the day after my chemo, I am pretty kind of wiped out. It's just an injection to put the cannula in and then they feed the drugs through and it's been straightforward. It's really, really relaxed and the bits that you're not picking up today are the humour. There's absolutely great banter in here, but it's an absolutely brilliant place and all the people that I've seen who've come in here feel, I think, they might not express it the same way, but they, they feel the treatment's very good and it is very, very relaxed. Everyone is different and not everyone's going to have my experience, but my experience has been brilliant. I've had very, very few side effects when they give you the chemotherapy booklet, which which lists the kind of symptoms that you can get, the, the sickness, the loss of appetite, those kinds of things. I just haven't had them. Uh, now I know I've been very lucky with that, and other people might be very lucky too. You, you just don't know, you just, you just have to go with it and see it through, and, and hopefully you'll come out the other side and things will be fine for you too.